The internet is a quintessential major economic or political question. As the FCC says in its own rulemaking, the internet is perhaps the most important technology of our time. And it's precisely for that reason that you can't just presume that Congress handed off regulation of the internet to five, or, or in this case, three unelected commissioners to set national policy. Congress wants the FCC to have broad authority. The idea is these are dynamic, quickly changing, innovative markets in communications. And the FCC is the expert agency that can keep abreast of the developments and figure out how to protect consumers and encourage innovation. Does the FCC have authority to impose heavy common carrier regulation on broadband internet service providers? That's not an open-ended question. It's a very specific legal question. The answer is found in the statutes itself. And in this case, you have to look at the Communications Act of 1934 as amended by the Telecommunications Act of 1996. And in the 1996 update, they created, Congress did, two classes of services. One class of service called telecommunication services, which are governed by Title II. So if you're defined to be a telecommunication service, you're subject to Title II of the Act. And then there was something called information services, which were not subject to Title II of the Act. That's what this basic distinction in the Act is all about, this distinction between telecommunications, which is regulated under Title II, and information service, such as broadband internet, which is not. The Supreme Court itself has said that the Act was not a model of clarity. There were lots of compromises built into the Act, uh, vagueness that the FCC had to work out later. The internet and other interactive computer services have flourished, Congress said, to the benefit of all Americans with a minimum of government regulation. And so Congress based its policy on that, Congress wrote in the Act, it is the policy of the United States to preserve the vibrant and competitive free market that presently exists for the internet and other interactive computer services, unfettered by federal or state regulation. Now, my take of the best way to read the Communications Act's requirement that internet access providers be subject to Title II, but that there be a light touch regulation for the internet, is that the services on top of the internet, Skype, Netflix, Marvin Amore's blog, like these should be lightly regulated, whereas access to the internet should be regulated to the extent that we need to ensure reasonable terms and services and no unreasonable discrimination, and to maintain the internet as it had always been, which was as a neutral and open network. So I don't doubt that the FCC and the FCC's proponents believe very strongly in what they're doing and believe that what they're doing is in the public interest. But before you can even get to that point, you first have to ask, and the regulators should ask and ask seriously, do we have statutory authority from Congress to fix the problem we want to fix? And if not, they should go to Congress and ask for that authority. When it comes to jurisdiction, you know, this time around the FCC got it right. Now they're squarely within a Title II of the Communications Act, which everyone has understood and has been litigated and, and, and used for 100 years. The courts need to strike the open internet order down. The FCC is going beyond its statutory jurisdiction in trying to impose Title II regulation on broadband internet. They ran through all of these stop signs in the Communications Act, Telecommunications Act, and the Administrative Procedure Act in order to impose a policy that at least three of the commissioners feel very strongly about, but which simply doesn't have a basis in the laws that Congress wrote. Yes, the courts should uphold net neutrality. They should uphold it for two reasons. One, the courts have already upheld the policy justifications that the FCC made. So then the question remains, does the FCC have the authority? I think unquestionably so uh, under Title II of the Communications Act. 